After watching a programming tutorial, you may sometimes wonder, how can I practice what I just learned? Are there places that can help me better understand this topic? Well, I've got some good news for you. There are a couple of websites that do offer practice problems, solutions, and communities focused on learning how to code and improving the skill as a whole. Hi, I'm Victor, and today on Height Above Sea Level, we'll be looking at three websites to help you practice your coding. Before we get started, if you want to talk more about this kind of thing, be sure to follow me on Twitch at Height Above Sea Level, where I do some live coding sessions as well as try and answer some of your questions as best I can. The first website worth checking out is leadcode.com. LeadCode is a coding platform designed not only to help you improve your programming skills, but to help you prepare for technical interviews as well. It was founded in Silicon Valley in 2015 and has amassed hundreds of thousands of users ever since. It's pretty popular among developers worldwide with employees from countries such as the US, China, and India. According to its LinkedIn page, it boasts over 1 million users as of 2017. Just like the other coding platforms out there, you'll be required to make an account first before attempting any of the practice problems on the site. This is a simple process that shouldn't take too long and is pretty much hassle-free. The first thing that greets you after is a very nice and clean looking dashboard where you can navigate between practice problems, discussions, or browse upcoming contests. To get started with a problem, click on the problems tab up top and a page will load full of questions with varying levels of difficulty. You can also filter the questions based on what topic you'd like to practice like arrays, math, or strings. Once you click on a question, the next page will display the full problem on the left half of the page with an editor on the right half. Just above the editor is a drop down list that lets you choose what language you want to program in. As it currently stands, LeadCode supports about 14 popular programming languages, so there's quite a bit to choose from. After typing your answer in the editor, you can run it to see if it passes the preliminary tests and if it does, you can then submit it to see if it passes the remaining tests. There are a couple of things you can do on this page such as view other people's submissions, discuss the current topic or if the question is too hard, view the solution, although this option comes with a caveat of which I will discuss shortly. Let's look at some of the pros and cons of using LeetCode to practice your programming skills, starting with the pros. First of all, the user interface is very nice and the overall user experience is pleasant. It gives you a couple of customization options when using the editor such as changing the theme, key bindings or font size which I found very helpful. The problems page gives you a short and precise overview of what to expect, the acceptance rate, and if you're a premium user, the frequency in which what particular question is asked during interviews, another nice little feature that gives you everything at a glance. Speaking of interview questions, premium users can learn about what type of questions what company asks. For example, if you want to be a software engineer at Google, you can filter out the problems based on questions asked during Google interviews. Another pro is solving problems and participating in contests earns you lead coins, the platform's currency, you can then redeem for prizes at the store. The more contests you participate in, the more lead coins you earn. Doing well in these contests also raises your rank in the global leaderboard, so if you fancy yourself a little competition, LeadCode has plenty of contenders for the rank of top developer. As for the cons, a premium subscription is required to see some of their solutions to problems. This could potentially be troublesome if the problem is too difficult and you're desperate to know the answer for one reason or the other. In addition to this, the subscription price may be a bit too expensive for some. The monthly subscription costs $35 and the yearly subscription costs $159. Whether some of the things in the premium version should have been included in the free version is a conversation you guys are free to have in the comments below. Overall, I think lead code is good both for people just looking to practice their coding skills as well as those who take programming more seriously and are looking to work full-time in software. However, those looking for work are probably the ones who benefit the most from using lead code. Still, it's worth a try either way. The second platform you can practice your programming on is HackerRank.com, founded by two Indian computer science graduates, Vivek and Hari, in 2012 to match developers to the right job. HackerRank boasts over 3 million developers from different countries worldwide as of May 2017 and is growing every day. Just like before, you'll be required to create an account before you can start solving any of the available problems. The dashboard is pretty simple with the navigation links at the top and the main content following after. Unlike lead code, the page containing the practice problems isn't as straightforward. You're shown the categories you'd like to practice on first, then the questions, and at the very bottom are a couple of tutorials. Clicking on a category then brings up a list of the practice problems in that category along with a set of filters and subdomains on the right. The very first question at the top usually is a sample one to get you acclimated 
committed to using the platform. You don't have to do it if you don't want to, but it's just there to help new users out. Clicking a question brings up a page similar to the one on LeetCode except this time, you'll have to scroll to the bottom to see the text editor. If you don't like this and prefer to have the questions and the editor side by side, click on the expand option above the editor. Just like before, you'll have a drop down list containing all the available programming languages and a couple of other customization options. Type your question in the editor, then choose run code at the bottom to run it against the preliminary tests cases, followed by submit code whenever you're ready. Let's talk about the pros and cons of HackerRank starting with the pros. First of all, the IntelliSense support is much better than lead codes. For those of you who don't know, IntelliSense is basically the autocomplete of programming. If you're struggling with programming lingo like this, I have a video explaining 25 programming words you're likely to encounter that can help you out. The second pro is HackerRank offers certification for a couple of programming languages, frameworks, and categories. This can come in handy when applying for jobs or during interviews. Just like LeetCode, HackerRank also has contests, except the contests here have cash prizes instead of the platform-created currency. Consistently participating in these and winning moves you higher up the leaderboard and maybe even one day land you at the top. Finally, you can apply for jobs directly from HackerRank. It's a platform trusted by many companies, so this added functionality makes the job hunting process much easier for those of you who might be interested. Over to the cons, first, the UI isn't as fleshed out as the other platforms. You don't get all the necessary information at once and have to do a little bit more navigation to get to what you're looking for. Another con is you need to use points to unlock the rest of the test cases whenever you get a question wrong. This isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it can get a bit frustrating when you don't have enough info on how the tests were written. Next, the way the questions are asked isn't as clear as the other two platforms, so this could potentially lead to you submitting wrong answers because you never understood what is being asked in the first place. This is also likely to cause a lot of problems for beginners since most of them may not understand the question structure leading to a poor experience on the platform. Finally, the certifications are kind of limited so if you want certification on something that isn't on offer then you'll have to look elsewhere. Overall, I think HackerRank is a good platform to practice your programming but I believe it's better suited for people serious about programming and actively searching for work. Beginners might struggle with it but that's where the last entry comes in. Finally, we have CodeWars.com. CodeWars is a community-based assessment platform founded in 2012 by Nathan Doctor and Jake Hoffner. It's currently owned and operated by Qualified, a tech company specializing in online assessments of software engineering skills. CodeWars' ranking system is more detailed and is modeled after the ranking system in Japanese martial arts, starting from 8th Q to 1st Q, then 1st Dan to 8th Dan. The code challenges are called kata, which is also borrowed from Japanese martial arts and completing them earns you honor points that increase your rank. The warriors with the most honor points are displayed on leaderboard for all to see. The setup process is the same as the other two. Create an account, verify your email, follow a simple tutorial and you're good to go. Where Code Wars truly shines is its approach to coding practice. It showcases it as a fun activity based on how it ranks you and how it has gamified the whole system. Let's look at the pros and cons. First, there's a wider array of difficulties to choose from. Whereas LeetCode and HackerRank only have three difficulties, easy, medium, and hard, Code Wars has 16 ranging from 8th Q to 1st Q, then 1st Dan to 8th Dan. This results in a more gradual progression compared to a spike from medium to hard with nothing in between as seen in other platforms. Code Wars also supports the most programming languages out of all three, so you're bound to find your preferred language on the platform. The responses to your answers are generally fast and you get to see a good number of test cases before you attempt any questions. In terms of pricing, it's completely free with an optional subscription that supports the platform and gives you access to things like an ad-free experience and access to features before they're released. Nothing you need is locked behind a paywall since the majority of the contributions on the platform come from the community. Speaking of community, all the content on Code Wars is created by members of the Code Wars community ranging from kata to tests to answers. You can even make your very own coding challenge and upload it to the platform, something that you can't do with the others so easily. Warriors in the community can team up and make clans where they can arrange custom training sessions. When you follow another warrior, the two of you become allies who are then grouped into a separate leaderboard where you can track their progress. Finally, the ranking system is the most fleshed out of all three and gives you a rank for proficiency in each of the programming languages you program in. This is especially helpful for people who know multiple languages and want to improve on one without falling too far behind on the other. As for the cons, Code Wars is very limited when it comes to setting you up for interviews or connecting you to companies that are hiring. It recently launched a program to connect programmers with job opportunities, so only time will tell how successful that turns out to be. Another con is the questions on the platform aren't as standardized as 
as those from Lead Code or Hacker Rank, since most of them come from the community. This isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it can lead to multiple opinions on which approach is best to solve a particular problem. Finally, Code Wars isn't as widely recognized by major industries worldwide compared to the other two, however, I do believe it's still worthy of your time. Overall, Code Wars is an excellent platform for beginners and casual coders looking to practice programming. Its laid-back approach makes coding less intimidating and is more welcoming to newbies. That's all I had for you guys. What do you think about these platforms? Have you used them before? What is your experience like? Let me know in the comments below. Also, don't forget to follow me on Twitch at height above sea level if you want to talk more about this live on stream. And if that doesn't work, come hang out on Discord instead. Just click the link in the description below and become a member of the Water Tribe today. Thank you so much for watching and as always, from me to you, deuces.